short. Thomas at the 14. Out to the 20. An excellent return man just past the 30-yard line where Bobby Harden makes the tackle. 17 yards on the return. And the Penn State Nittany Lions, led by their quarterback, John Schaefer, an academic All-America, with D.J. Dozier and Tim Manoa, Eric Hamilton, Ray Roundtree, and Brian Cyberling, the tight end. Conlon, Morgan, Radisek, Wisniewski, and Clayton, the offensive line. First down for Penn State at their own 31-yard line. Play action. Almost sacked and then dumped. Dan Silio. And Dan Stuff. A loss of 15 yards and the Nittany Lions in trouble from the beginning. Charlie Penn State wanted to change things up at the beginning, so they're going to try and throw the football, but it is Stubbs from the outside coming in to make the sack. And he hits the Hurricanes off at all. That's number 99, Moss, getting there first, and Stubbs uh, taking care of it later on. Dan Cilio, a big, strong defensive tackle in the middle, had part of it as well. Second down and 24. And Tim Manoa gets the football. Here is number 44. Dozier then coming out with the football. They're going to mark the ball dead at the 20-yard line. A gain of four. It's going to be third down and 20, and... What Penn State wanted to do, Jimmy, was to control the ball. Here's the defense, Stubbs, Cilio, Brown, and Hawkins. And the inside pressure from Cilio and Jerome Brown, what do you expect to see? Winston Moss, George Meyer Jr., Rod Carter, the linebackers. And the secondary, Ellis, Bain, Brown, and Blaze. I think what they wanted to do is try and open it up at the beginning to change some of the tendencies they had coming into this football game. It obviously did not work on that first down play. Offered in motion. Schaefer with pressure again, and he has wrestled down for the second time in the ball game. This time it was Bill Hawkins who got it. So a pair of sacks open the ball game for the Hurricane defense. And the Nittany Lions are in immediate trouble. A loss of six is going to be fourth down and 26. John Bruno to kick. David Kintai, an excellent return man, and the Canes will start with outstanding field position. David Kintai. Kintai at the 42. Stumbles. A 43-yard kick by John Bruno. Four yards on the return. Vernier down for the Penn State Nittany Lions. And now Miami to move on offense for the first time. Led by Heisman Trophy winner Vinny Testaverde. An offensive firepower. Oh, Testaverde. Melvin Bracken, Heisman, Irvin, Blaze, and the tight end Charles Henry. Maddox, Alekna, Ricosi, O'Connor, and Proven. Uh, Matt Patch and Forscott yards, Proven yards, at the tackle. Right. And there was a marker down. And a holding call against Miami, so they will start back at their own 37 yard line. Their 36 yard line, they'll spot it. Ball and it is first down. 36 yard line. First down, Kate. The tight end changes side. That's Charles Henry. Mr. Verdi takes a lot of time. He gives to Bratton. And Bratton outside on the far sideline. Jane Conlon was the man chasing him. Look at that defense of Penn State. And, number and the front three of White, Kane Russo, Conlon. and Johnson. The strength, of course, the linebackers. Graham Bauer, Giftopoulos, and All-America Shane Conlon. And problems in the secondary. Cobbs, Henderson, Isom, and Johnson. The problem is they're not that tall. It's a small secondary. That's the biggest problem they have. Michael Irvin, 6'2", wide receiver for Miami, is going against a couple of uh, defensive backs, 5'9", 5'9", 5'10", and 5'11". And Testaverde's first pass is on target to Michael Irvin. 
And Irvin has the first down. As he goes out of bounds at the Penn State 47-yard line, he picks up 12 on the play. And Eddie Johnson will be the man chasing him. And that's what, what Miami's going to try to do all night long, try to get the ball to Michael Irvin, their leading receiver on the air with 53 catches. Eddie Johnson on the corner. They're giving him a lot of deep support for the reason that uh, Michael Irvin, with that great speed, runs about a, a 4 6 40. He told us earlier in the week, he said, you tell the people out there I run a 4 4, that's all they need to know. Actually, though, his coach told me it's more like a 4 6. The Penn State not going to take any chances. They're going to give Eddie Johnson on the corner some deep help. Last night, Irvin said he ran a late 4-4-9. Yeah, he just didn't say how late it was. First down. And here's Heisman. He is met by Bob White, number 34. Brought down by number 34, Bob White. Interesting story, the background of Bob White. Yes, it is. Bob White uh, grew up in Florida in a depressed area, a family from western Pennsylvania. Brought him to that part of the country, tried to get him an education. And Joe Paterno stepped in and said, didn't think he had the grades, but said to him, if you read a book every week or two for a couple of weeks over the summer, I'll give you a scholarship. He did it. The first book he read, Huck Finn, was tutored by Sue Paterno and turned out to be quite a student at Penn State. Eight of two, and it's second down and eight. No score early in the ball game. Penn State stopped on their first thrust and first opportunity as Testaverde rolls out and is tipped in the air and is incomplete. Highsmith, the intended receiver. And Bob White was the man putting the pressure on. So it'll be third down and eight for the game. Joe Paterno told us early in the week, if you're going to flush Vinny Testaverde out of the pocket, you want to do it early because later on he can be deadly. He also told his defensive backs to stay close because there's no guarantee he's going down when somebody first hits him. Almost a completion down Smith to High Smith. Third down and eight. Matt Johnson checks into the defensive set. And Trey Bauer comes out. They'll go with a four down lineman set. And three linebackers. High Smith, the remaining back. Testaverde over the middle to the tight end, Charles Henry. And Henry down at the 35 yard line. A gain of just over 10 yards and enough for the first down. Eddie Johnson makes the tackle. And so Miami converts on a third down opportunity. And the blitz was coming from Penn State's side. Now that's something Vinny Testaverde likes to see because he knows where he wants to go with the football. That time they sent Pete Giftopoulos, the middle linebacker, and Eddie Johnson, number 39, was forced to cover Charles Henry man-to-man -man all over the field. And again, that's a mismatch because the difference of an, in height. Charles Henry is 6'4", Eddie Johnson just 5'10". 11-20, that is the time remaining. First quarter, we have no score. And the Canes on the move. At the 35-yard line of Penn State. And we have flags on the field. And a little pushing and shoving. There's been a lot of crosstalk between uh, the ball clubs this week. And we expect to see some early pushing and shoving and some jawing. In too. fact, it continued coming into the stadium tonight as uh, Penn State was getting off the bus. Miami was waiting for them, yelling and screaming and hollering. So it continued right up until game time. Here's Jimmy Harper. Delay a game on offensive team. Violation of the 25 second clock takes the ball out to the 40. It'll be first down and 15. Jimmy Johnson, head coach of the Hurricanes, one and three at bowl games, 0 and two at Miami. He was at Oklahoma State prior to coming to Miami. This year, of course, as you know, 11 and 0, with the Canes, 29 and seven. First and 15, and here's Heisman. And he has hit at the line of scrimmage, ball scored for a couple of yards. Duffy Cobb. The cornerback came up to take him down. Giftopoulos was also there. And they're going to mark it about the 38-yard line. So it'll be a couple, and it's second down and 13. This is dangerous territory for Joe Paterno. Miami with the kind of firepower they have. Second and 13, you say fine, but they are at the 38-yard line going in. They can gamble and do a lot of things in this situation. It's difficult to call a defense when a team is inside your 40. Penn State showing the blitz, and it's coming. There's pressure from the outside, but the pass is to Heisman. Spins away. And he got away from the hero, Marcus Henderson, and picked up three or four more yards, a total of 10 on the play. It's shy of the first down. As Isom and Eddie Johnson make the tackle. Charlie, one of the things that the Hurricanes are doing is throwing short passes 
and they're doing it not to get Vinny Testaverde into the game, but to, to ease their offensive line in. They knew that Paterno was going to try a lot of different blitzes. He went back and got the game film from the Sugar Bowl last year where Tennessee did all kinds of blitzes against Testaverde. What he wants to do is ease his offensive line in. He feels like there's a mismatch in the offensive line of the Hurricanes and his front seven players. And Bob, there was a player change as Tim Johnson went out and Pete Kirkendall came in, I believe, for an equipment change on the far side. Well, one of the reasons that Penn State is going to keep switching their defensive linemen, they want a lot of fresh people in there because they know Testaverde has a great deal of mobility. They want to keep those people fresh so they can continually try to put some pressure on the Miami quarterback. They're down and four. Testaverde rolling right. Lots of time. He throws deep into the end zone. And it is incomplete. Brett Perryman. Just trying to hang on to the ball and one foot in the end zone and he couldn't do it. Duffy Cobb has the coverage. And it's going to be fourth down. And we look to see if Mark Seelig is going to come in on fourth down and just under four. And they're going to go for it. Fourth and four, 9.39 is the time, first quarter. Testaverde over the middle, tipped, it's incomplete. Henry, the intended receiver, the tight end. The Nittany Lions hold. Giptopolis for Penn State makes the play, and Penn State takes over on down. An interesting call on the part of the University of Miami. It just shows you the great confidence they've got in Testaverde and on their offense. Mark Sealing, their field goal kicker, they have not been pleased with his work so far. It was going to be a long field goal, but they should have had the completion. The ball is dropped by Charles Henry, the tight end, and they sure enough could have had the first down well inside of Penn State territory. We'll be back in just a moment. Dan Cilio one time and Bill Hawkins the other, and the Nittany Lions second time in offense from their own 29-yard line. No score. Playing water. Uh, there's a water bottle. D.J. Dozier. And Dozier is wrapped up at about the 34-yard line. It'll be close to five. It'll be second down and five, as Benny Blades was there to make the stop for Miami. Now I think you'll see a more normal Penn State and Miami offense coming in. The Penn State try the two passes, but that's the man that'll be carrying the football most of the time for Penn State tonight. He had about 800 yards this season off of uh, four years ago. As a freshman, had over 1,000 yards, but was injured much of the time. He changed his style from the big power kind of a running back to a more of a slasher. Now he says he's back on track trying to run people over. We'll find out if that works tonight. Second down and five. Eric Hamilton in motion. Smith. And Smith dives to the 45-yard line. He's got the first down. A gain of 10 yards on the play. And that football came out right at the yep. end, Charlie, and they ruled that he was down before the fumble occurred. Vinny Blades was there for Miami along with Selwyn Brown. All right, Penn State, the other thought is to try and keep their running backs fresh. There you see the block on the corner by number 42, D.J. Dozier. Allowing Smith to break around the corner. He's a smooth running back, and he's powerful enough to try and push some people around inside. Penn State with their first first down of the ball. Game. A little swing, left flat. It is over the head of Steve Smith, and it is a forward pass, so it is incomplete. And Bill Hawkins was there for Miami. And it is second down and 10 at the 44. A shaky start for John Schaefer, the quarterback. Well, he is... 65 and one since his seventh grade as a starting quarterback the only loss of course coming in the biggest football game he had played in that is before tonight's contest last year against Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl did not perform very well through three interceptions don't let that number run away from you 65 and one 65 and one since the seventh grade as a starting quarterback second down and six and we've got flat We've got a procedure call against Penn State. So it's going to be second down and 15. So you would think that the Penn State Nittany Lions with a total of 17 seniors starting offensively and defensively, movement in the offensive line, and only seven senior starters for Miami, that Miami might be the team that is uptight at the beginning, but thus far it has been Penn State. All week long they've been loose, and, and he's probably been the loosest of them all. He's a very quiet leader. When you take a look at Vinny Testaverde in meetings and in practices, very quiet, but you always watch the other players 
going to Testaverde, standing around him, just getting close to him because he is the man with the talent and the one that drives this team. Second and 15. DJ Dozier to the 49-yard line. He'll pick up 10. And it's going to be third and five as Winston Moss is the man who made the stop. All right, from ground level, DJ is going to come right into your living room. What a nice block from number 57, Chris Conlon. Watch him coming downfield. There he is following the tackle in front, the block on number 91 on the corner. That's Rod Carter allowing DJ Dozier to get upfield and get the first down. Jerry Hug checks in as a wide receiver for Penn State. Excuse me, it's third down, not first down. Third down and five. Schaefer to throw as pressure. And the pass is incomplete. Cyberling would have been the intended receiver. He was bumped at the line of scrimmage and knocked down. There was no flag. It'll be fourth and five. Penn State seemed to be trying to run a pick play. Schaefer does like Cyberling, the tight end, crossing across the middle. At that time, the defensive player running to carry and, and cover his player going the other way had no idea that Cyberling was coming toward his side. That's number 96, Dan Stubbs. You see, he had no idea that Cyberling was in his path, so no interference was called. Bruno kicking to Kintai. There's pressure. He gets it off. Kintai a fair catch, but he wants to let it go into the end zone, but he bounces in the field of play. The ball stays at the one-yard line. 50 yards on the kick. And it will be down at the two-yard line. The officials say we have no score. 7.44, time remaining. First quarter. Early drones with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy in the national championship on the line. Miami with the ball at their own two-yard line. Testaverde has completed three of six for 30 yards. No score. Karpinski down the ball on the punt at the two. And Highsmith gets the call, and the defense stops him right at the line of scrimmage. His momentum may take him to the three-yard line. We'll mark it there. It's going to be second down and nine, and Pete Giftopoulos, one of the four outstanding linebackers for Penn State, was there. Testaverde. Greg Ricosi is the center. And more than 70,000 fans here at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Testaverde to throw from the end zone far side. And it is incomplete. Good defensive play by Duffy Collins. Michael Irvin, Mr. Playmaker for the Canes, the intended receiver. That's what they call him, Mr. Playmaker. Again, notice how much distance he has to go and try and run the pattern. Just a quick turnout. But that's what Penn State has got to rely on by coming up and trying to knock the ball loose from great, talented people such as Michael Irvin. You see, it's a wonderful throw by Testaverde. You need a strong arm to throw it that far to the sideline. And Testaverde has the ability to do it. Third down and nine. Testaverde with protection and time, and he throws over the middle to Bratton, and it is complete at the 15-yard line. It will be a first down as he picks up 12 on the play. And Trey Bauer makes the tackle. All right, this is the way Testaverde looked at it. He bought some time at the beginning. There you see Brant, number five, left part of your screen. Testaverde had enough presence of mind to wait for him to clear the linebacker, number 90. That's Giftopoulos. He gets the football in for the first down. And give credit to the Canes offensive line. Maddox, Alekna, Ricosi, O'Connor, and Patchen. They gave him that time. And a little breathing room out at the 15-yard line. No score in the ballgame. Six and a half minutes to go, first period. And here's Bratton. Bratton to the 20-yard line. He picks up five. It's going to be second and five. As the hero back or strong safety for Penn State, Marcus Henderson makes the tackle along with Shane Conlon, the linebacker. And Conlon is down. This could be devastating to the Daily Lion D. It could. They rely on Conlon for many things. He's the leader spiritually and physically out on the field for him. They move him around. They play him at a linebacker position sometimes, down line. But let's take a look and see just how he got rolled up on. They seem to be looking at the lower leg. There he is, number 31, chasing Bratton down, number five. One of his own players comes from the far side, and he kind of gets leg whipped from the corner. 
Second down and five. Miami from their own 20 yard line. Ray Smith. Ball is loose. And it is recovered by Charles Henry, the tight end. The Canes retain possession at the 21 yard line. Now, Conlon's replacement is number 84, Keith Karpinski. Let's find out if Miami ran at him to find out exactly how good of a football player he is. No, not exactly, but it is Karpinski who coughs the ball up from Alonzo Highsmith. He makes the play, and Charles Henry jumps on it for the games. Now, Miami's only lost 10 fumbles all year long. They are a very good team as far as hanging on to the football. Third down and four. And Chester ready to throw. Has four on the pattern. He goes deep, and it is there. Penn State has the ball if it is ruled a completion. It is ruled a completion, a fumble, and a recovery by Penn State. Duffy Cobbs got it. Well, what a throw on the part of Vinny Testaverde. You'll see her coming into the picture down from the corner, and this is where you want it as a wide receiver in between the zone. You better have it on the money, and it is. Now, the thing is, Penn State, number 22 with the big hit for the Nittany Lions. That's Ray Isom. He plays like he's about 6'2 and runs a 4'40. The problem is he's only 5'9 and runs a 4'840. And here's Dozier. Shut off to the right side, counters to the left, and picks up four to the 40-yard line, and it is second down and six. All right, now you're the wide receiver coming downfield. You know it's a zone. you got to find the middle of it. You know you got a strong arm quarterback, and you get it. But there's number 22, Ray Isom, who jars the football away from Michael Irvin. Duffy Cobbs, after a big scramble, comes up with the ball for the Nittany Lions. And Irvin, of course, as you saw, did have possession. It was a fumble, and Penn State with the ball. Now second and six at the Canes' 40-yard line. A little play action, the reverse. Blair Thomas and played very beautifully by the Miami defense Rod Carter the linebacker the defense of the Canes outstanding here in the first period well, they've been tremendous Rod Carter's got outstanding speed especially if you can run down somebody like Blair Thomas who runs a 4-3-40 then you really have some kind of speed on the outside he's a very good outside linebacker for the Canes They've got two dominating inside tackles with Cilio and Brown. That allows people like Rod Carter on one side, Winston Moss, the other outside linebacker, to roll freely and crush people like to play top of the line. pass is complete, and it is to Dozier, the leading receiver for Penn State, but way short of a first down. Rod Carter was there for the defense. You know, Charlie, Penn State has come out offensively and gone just the opposite of what they normally do. They normally come out and run the football. The reason Schaefer has not started off hot is because he's trying to throw the ball, and it's not working. Miami has good defensive pass coverage. And it's fourth down. John Bruno to kick. Kintai is the deep back. He wants to just hang this one. And he does inside the 10 and out of bounds at the 9-yard line. 31 yards on the placement. By John Bruno, we've got a timeout, 4.04. Time remaining, first quarter. Let's go back and take a look at one of the big plays so far in this game, the fumble by Irvin. He's going to run a slant. Now watch Penn State, three deep zone, and Isom right in the middle. You won't see Penn State committing their deep secondary very often. They want to play deep, take away the big plays. Now watch Isom, good vision all the way. When he sees the ball caught, one of the things Paternal says, we're going to let him catch it and come up and try to knock the ball loose. And we're successful on that occasion. And Shane Conlon back in the ball game for Penn State. It's a first down for Miami at their own nine as Alonzo Heisman is the ball carrier. He'll pick up about two, maybe three. Let's see where they spot the ball. Average field position at the start of a drive. Miami from their own 16. Penn State their own 39, which points out the fact the two stars of the ball game thus far, the defense of Miami and the kicking, John Bruno, the punter for Penn State. There's Conlon back in the ball. Game. Second down and seven. They marked it to the 12. That's diverting all the time in the world. Now he runs out of time and he's dropped. Don Graham got him first sack for Penn State. 
He'll lose nine, but he had plenty of time. Yeah, this is not a sack on the offensive lineman of the University of Miami. This sack was created by a very good coverage scheme by the Penn State defense. Finally, the sack coming by Don Graham. Not Vinny Testaverde, but plenty of time for Testaverde to go downfield. There simply was no one open. They're down in 16, the ball on the three. Do you go to Irvin here? Do you look for their playmaker? Oh, he always looks for Irvin. Who else do you go to? He's the playmaker. He's the guy who runs that late 4 4 9. Yeah. And Testaverde wants a timeout. One of the things that Joe Paterno wanted to do was get inside of the mind of Vinny Testaverde to cause him some confusion. He takes a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Bob Greasy, Vinny Testaverde has completed five of nine, 66 yards. I think he's throwing the ball too hard, Charlie, and that happens when you haven't played in a while. He hadn't played in six weeks. You know, he missed a week because of the injury, and also with all the awards, he missed a lot of practice. A little uptight. From the end zone with pressure. He's out to the five, to the 10, to the 20. Has the first down to the 24-yard line. 21 yards. It was third and 16. Testaverde not with the arm, with the leg. All right. Well, this is why he's the Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, throwing the football is one thing. A lot of guys can throw it, but he throws it better than anybody else, and he's got great strength to get away from a couple of people in the end zone. If Testaverde doesn't live in a weight room during the offseason, he's tackling the end zone for a sack, but he gets away and gets a lot of yardage. First down, getting Miami out of trouble, backed up in their own end zone. At the 24-yard line, and he got away from Bob White, who had a shot at him. We had some jumping, and flags are down, but Bob White had a shot at him for a safety in the end zone and couldn't quite get to it. And there is Bob White, 6'3", 254-pound senior. That was Charles Henry of the Canes. Jerome Brown talking with his head coach, Jimmy Johnson. The ball back to the 19, and it's first down and 15. Five linebackers in the set now for Penn State on first and 15. And Highsmith jumps to the outside and powers for a couple of extra yards, hit at the 25. His momentum takes him to the 27-yard line. He took Trey Bauer and Eddie Johnson with him. Highsmith is actually a linebacker playing the position of fullback. He was a linebacker through his high school days, an All-American at that position. Growing up in, in Miami, came to the university, and Howard Schnellenberger turned him into a running fullback. He's got the mentality of a defensive player. He wants to attack people, run them over. He blocks very well. He does not try to run around many people. If he's got a choice, he's going to run you over. We talked with Highsmith the last I think kind of worked out here in the evening. He said, look at my hands. He said, they have a beat. I have the hands of a 65-year-old man. So they keep getting beaten up when he's trying to run the folks down. Second and six. Pressure coming. Testaverde hits the open man, Highsmith, who is all alone in the right flat, and he is out to the 42-yard line. He picks up 14 yards before Duffy Cobb stops him. And Testaverde reading the blitz. You're right, Charlie. He read the blitz. Two linebackers on the same side. Highsmith ignores him. Now, to do that, Testaverde has got to know that there is a man free, in this case, two men free. He sees the two linebackers coming. He knows the hot receiver is there. He's a first-class quarterback, and that's why he, one of the reasons he won the Heisman, because he makes decisions like that. And Alonzo Highsmith takes himself out. Darrell Oliver comes in, and Bratton gets the call. As Graham brings him down at the 44. Going to be second down and seven. 57 seconds. That is the time remaining in a scoreless first quarter. And like the first couple of rounds of a heavyweight fight. It is. Interesting enough, Miami is controlling the football continually. I imagine the time of possession is heavily on the side of the Hurricanes. And that, Charlie, something we did not expect coming into the football game. We thought uh, Penn State would be the one controlling the ball. Matt Johnson and Pete Giptopoulos with the tackle. But we also felt that the Canes would have a quick strike offense. And 
they haven't been able to put back-to-back -back big plays together. Well, they failed on the fourth down situation early in the first quarter and had to come from deep in their own territory the last two possessions. Second and six, Highsmith back into the offense of Sheffield Miami and Testaverde to throw. Perryman has it at the 42-yard line. He was hit and held on, and he picks up 13 as Eddie Johnson made the defensive play. But an excellent reception by Brett Perryman. Perryman and Brian Blades will alternate at that one spot as receivers. Between them, they have 52 receptions. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. The score is Miami nothing and Penn State nothing. In third play of this drive, it was third and 16 at the three-yard line. Testaverde to throw. Pressure coming from Bob White. Well, most athletes or most quarterbacks aren't great athletes. I think we'll talk to Bob about that in just a few minutes. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but Vinny Testaverde bench presses 325 pounds. One of the things that Joe Paterno told us this week was that he was concerned that his defensive lineman getting close to Testaverde the tendency of a defensive back is to get away from the wide receiver. There's no way they think that the sack will not be made, but Testaverde runs out of people's grasp and does it very well. That was a big play in this drive, getting them out of their own territory. He picked up 21 yards and the first down. Here's a play action fake, and it is too high, and it is incomplete as he overthrows Melvin Bratton and trying just a little touch throw. And Bob Greasy, I, I have the feeling it's a strange first quarter that we saw. Charlie, you mentioned a little earlier that Paterno wanted to get into the mind of Testaverde, and one of the ways he's doing it is he's taking away everything deep. He has three men sitting deep. Testaverde could have to, would have to sit back there 10 seconds for one of his receivers to run past him. The other thing he's doing is occasionally he is blitzing one or two linebackers, so he's mixing it up, but the thing he is doing is taking away any big plays. Testaverde has hit 7 of 12 for 91 yards. Second down and 10. Here's the draw. And Highsmith to the 41. So he has a couple. And it's going to be third down and eight. Let's look at the statistics of that strange first quarter. Rushing yardage, Miami 42 to 4. And look, at that. To and look at the time of yeah, possession. That's, that's the big factor there. The passing team, the University of Miami, you would think that they would not have the time of possession on their side, but they are dominating that statistic. Shows how expert we are. We thought it would be exactly the other way. And if it was this way, Miami would be leading by two touchdowns. Third down and eight. No score in the ball game. Opening moments of the second quarter. Just diverted all the time in the world. And goes deep to Brandon. It's intercepted. Duffy Cobb to the 25. And returns to the 30-yard line. 15 yards on the return. And Duffy Cobb's his fifth interception. He had four during the season. And he has both turnovers for the Nittany Lions. He has the fumble recovery and the interception. Now, what's Vinny Testaverde doing? You know, those shoving matches, that's supposed to be between big guys, linebacker types. But I told you, he's an athlete, and he gets mixing it up in the middle. He gets a little greedy here. He's got Brian Blades, number nine, wide open. There you see him. Bottom of your screen to the right. But he doesn't go to him. He wants the big shot down the middle to Melvin Bratton. And it's Duffy Cobbs who takes it away. His second turnover of the day. the 30-yard line. Penn State in their own territory. First down and no score. And Schaefer with pressure. And he goes deep. Has a man. He's there. Overthrows him. Roundtree could not get to it. Maybe a step away from six points. This does not look like Penn State. No, it doesn't. Those wide receivers aren't scared. They've got the black shoes on. I don't think anybody told them that. They're not supposed to be able to run past cornerbacks. But he had it wide open on the corner, getting behind the coverage. And a good throw would have gotten it. Don Ellis, number 29, the best Miami man-to-man -man cover beaten by Roundtree on that play. Darrell Giles has come in. Jerry Hugg has come in. They're now the two wide receivers. And it's second and 10. And the give is to the first back. And that's... Timonoa. And there's Testaverde on the phone with the coaches. George Meyer Jr., the leading tackler for the game, making the last stop. This will be a game of patience for Grinny Testaverde. That defense of uh, the Penn State Nittany Lions, they're gambling a lot. They're gambling that with the short passing game, they'll give them that and that they're going to cough the football up. Well, Miami has done that thus far, but how long will it last? Gain of five to the 35, and it's third and five. 
as Pompert, one of the two tight ends, is in motion. Here's pressure. And he hangs it up and out of bounds, way overthrowing Pompert. And I think Schaefer was just running out of time. Stubbs and Brown were putting the pressure on him. It's going to be fourth down and five. So Penn State unable to capitalize on the turnover. They go with the play action fake on third and five. I just don't understand that. Who are you going to fool the pretend you're going to run the football in this situation? He throws it far out of bounds, but it was the pressure from Stubbs on the outside that forced Schaefer to get rid of the ball a little bit earlier than maybe he wanted to. And John Bruno with his fourth punt. David Kintai set for the return. And putting the pressure on was Bubba McDowell, a great punt. Taken back at the 14-yard line. Out to the 20. A flag is down. Two flags are down. The return near the 25-yard line. Quintus McDonald made the stop. John Bruno with a 47-yard kick. Kintai with a 10-yard return. And we have a pair of flags down. 51-yard punt. And it's going to be a clipping call against the Kings. Preliminary. And so Miami will start this time from their own 11-yard line. And it is the kicking game that continually puts Good Miami back, back in the hole. Clicking on the receiving team. Jimmy Harper, the referee, the officials all from the Southeastern Conference. And we've got a timeout with 13.06. That is the time remaining in the first half, and we have no score between Miami and Penn State. Let's go back in time where Testaverde helping out one of his linemen, Bob. Is this a smart move? If you're 6'5 and 210, it is. <laughs> Testaverde is big enough. If Topolis comes in and starts a shoving match, and then he takes up for his offensive lineman. Did you ever do that to anybody? <laughs> All my offensive linemen were big enough to take care of themselves. <laughs> Miami has the ball at their own 11 yard line. First down, 13 06. Time remaining in the second quarter. Shane Conlon has been replaced now by Keith Karpinski. Conlon, you know, with a little knee problem earlier in the ballgame. Warren Williams is in the offensive set as a running back for the Cage. The second back is Williams. And he's to the 17. We'll give him about six. It's going to be second down and four. Ray Bauer making the tackle. Mike Russo was also there. Tim Johnson is back in the ballgame defensively. Here are the scoring opportunities of Miami. They've been moving the football there. You see in the middle, 34, 38, and 50 yards on their possessions. But it's where they're starting that's giving them problems. Well inside their own territory on three occasions. Second down and four. Testaverde to throw. Has time. Then he slips, steps forward. He's going to run for it for the second time in the ballgame. And he dives at the 20. And they'll mark it down at the 20-yard line. So he picks up three. He's going to be a yard shy of the first down. And it was his old friend Pete Giftopoulos, number 90. And he had that talking conversation with him earlier, who was there for Penn State. That offensive line of Miami gives them credit. That was the patchwork group that the coaching staff of the Hurricanes had been worried about the whole time. Pete Giftopoulos there, you see, making the tackle later on. But that offensive line of the Hurricanes doing quite a job protecting the Testaverde. He simply doesn't uh, have any receivers open downfield. Two tight ends on the set, third and one, trying to dive the left side was Heisman. And he needed a yard, and I'm not sure if he got it. And the officials are going to bring the chains out for the measurement. You saw the headshot just a moment ago of Pete Giptopoulos. You may have noticed he's from Hamilton, Ontario. And he wants to be a hockey coach. And he played under Canadian rules when he was up there in high school. 12 men on the field, 120-yard uh, field, although they did have four downs when he was playing high school football there instead of the three owned by the CFL. Do we have the first down? We do by just a little bit. At the 21-yard line. And Miami continues to control the clock, whereas you thought that would be Penn State controlling the clock, or at least trying to. The Miami defense has taken the offense completely out of the hands of the Nittany Lions. Time remaining in the first half. No score. Here's Williams. Slides to the outside. Has a yard. That's about it. Maybe two. As Shane Conlon was there. They're going to mark it at the 22. 
Conlon, number 31, back into the football game. We mentioned the knee problem early on, but he takes on the offensive lineman. Number 73, Dave Alekna, getting stiffed by Shane Conlon. He looks healthy on that play. Second and nine, and a look at the All-America from Fruisburg, New York. Just a birdie, and it is there to Brian Blades. And Blades down at the 32-yard line. He'll pick up 10 and should have the first down in route as Duffy Cobbs makes the tackle. Duffy seems to be everywhere. Are they picking on him? I don't think they're picking on him. He's also almost 20 yards off the ball. He's not going to allow anyone to run past him. Like, as we said earlier, Penn State is playing that gambling type of a defense. They're saying, we'll give you those short passing things. We're going to come up and make the tackle and hopefully cough the ball up. But I don't know if that's good enough to beat Miami tonight. How many times are they going to cough it up? They're very good in the turnover department, only giving up 21 all year long. It's a first down at the 33-yard line. And here's Heisman. Welcome to Ohio Smith, the ball carrier. Tackled by number 35, Trey Bauer. A gain of a yard to the 34. It'll be second down and nine as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. Pick up of a yard on the play. Paterno pacing the sideline. 34 yard line. His overall record, 198 victories. This could be 199, or it could be his 45th loss, or it could be his third time. Brian Blades on the receiving end of a Testaverde pass at the 47-yard line. A pickup of a quick 13 and the first down as Duffy Cobbs again makes a defensive play. And the Canes now all of a sudden have a quick strike offense underway. you got to watch him here. Well, uh, Once again, it's the arm of Testaverde. Some of the pro scouts were telling me early on that they think Testaverde has a stronger arm and quicker feet than Jim Kelly or or Kozar, the two people that uh, were here before him at the University of Miami. And certainly that's good enough to show that he's going to be the number one draft choice this year. We've got a flag down on the field. The official spotted the ball at the 46-yard line on that first down. And here's Jimmy Harper. That ball foul. It's going to be a legal procedure against the Cane. They've gotten hit with that penalty a couple of times previously in the ball game, and it'll cost him five. Let's look at that time of possession. Down on the Kane 41 yard line. And that just goes to show that the gambling defense of Penn State. Miami is settling for the shorty passing game. Testaverde has got to continue to do that to be more patient. Take what Penn State is giving them. They'll continue to build up that time of possession and move down the field if they can hang on to the football. First down and 15. And here comes pressure. And he picks up the blitz, and the pass is incomplete. Brian Blades, the intended receiver. Well, the Miami uh, fronts a uh, seven block. Absolutely everybody. There you see the blitz coming from the middle. I think that Blades ran this pattern just a little bit too long. When you have that type of a pressure, probably Blades was the hot receiver on the side. He's got to run a shorter pattern to adjust for the pressure. Testaverde was waiting on him and waiting on him. He finally had to release the ball because pressure was on his way. Testaverde down 9 of 16, 114 yards, and one interception. Second down. And Vinny to throw again. Over the middle, this one is dropped in and out of the hands of Warren Williams. Should have had that. Very catchable ball. Getting back to Bob Greasy's uh, point a little bit before, this time, Testaverde does not seem to throw the football too hard. Williams simply drops it. But it is a tendency of a quarterback waiting for that big football game to come around with a little bit of a too much on the uh, the arm action that time though Williams simply dropped it. The Canes now with three wide receivers Perryman Blades and Urban third down and 15. Penn State with a three man rush. To the sideline it is Williams and he is going to come up short of the first down. He'll pick up 11. He needed 15, and Duffy Cobbs makes the tackle. They're going to spot it at the 47-yard line in Penn State territory. And Jeff Beagles is in to punt. This is his first punt. He, by the way, is from Scottsdale, Arizona, right here in the Valley of the Sun. We asked you if that was a... Did he have home field advantage? And what did he say? 
He said the only thing he did was tell the van driver where to go because they were lost sometime going to a banquet. On the return, it is Jim Coates with the fair catch for Penn State. And 34 yards on the punt by Jeff Beagles. We've got a timeout, and we have no score. In the this is Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy. Bob, John Schaefer, one of five, three yards. He's been sacked twice. A terrible start. It's a fish out of water, Charlie. He needs a running game so he can throw. He is an average passer at best. He is an intelligent man. He can check off to the run, but he cannot carry this offense by himself. And here is Dozier, the man who should carry it. He's got the first down, and he is outside the 30. Could this be the spark for Penn State? 19 yards for D.J. Dozier. Vinny Blades with the tackle. It's as if Penn State came in here with stripes on the uniforms and white shoes and everything else because this is what they are. They're that, that dry team, the one with the nasty uniforms without the stripes, and the running game. They're the blue-collar team. And now they're getting back to it. D.J. Dozier has got to carry the ball 15 to 20 times during this football game if Penn State is going to generate any type of an offense. And it's a first down at the 33-yard line. Time remaining, eight and a half minutes in the second quarter. And the give is the second back, D.J. Dozier, and he fumbled the ball and fell on it. And Jerome Brown was right there for the cave. Good penetration that time by Dan Stubbs and Jerome Brown. It seemed like they were in the backfield very quickly, just as the handoff is made. That is Jerome Brown. He gets around the block from the lineman up front. That's number 74, Stan Clayton, who doesn't get a hand on him. Ball is fumbled. D.J. Dozier hops on it for Penn State. Darrell Giles checks in at wide receiver for Eric Hamilton. Second and 11. Here comes pressure. Schaefer to throw. And he is hit. They're going to rule it a fumble, and Miami has recovered. Bill Hawkins recovers the fumble. Jerome Brown caused it. And a loss of nine, and the turnover and the Canes have it. All right, it seemed like Schaefer was unaware of the player making the tackle down below. That looks like Jerome Brown. The ball comes out and it seems like it didn't even touch the ground. Did that hit the ground? Maybe rule is an interception. Let's find out. Here's Jerome Brown, number 98, getting to him. The ball does not touch the ground. No, it's an interception. It's an, it's an interception. That's right. Hawkins gets an interception. And Miami with the golden opportunity at the Penn State 23-yard line, first down. Heisman. And he is out of bounds at about the 15. Trey Bauer was the man chasing him for Penn State. So a gain of eight yards on the play, and it's going to be second down and two. Smith, 10 carries, only 31 yards at the 15-yard line. And here's Highsmith to the left side. And he rambles to about the seven. He's got the first down. Jerome Brown, the All-American defensive tackle for the game. Eddie Johnson with the stop. It's going to be first down and goal to go at the seven-yard line. And with Penn State seeming just... Jimmy, they've been hanging on, just hanging on throughout the first half. Well, they've been fortunate by getting the good field position as far as Penn State's defense is concerned. John Bruno has been keeping them deep in their own territory. This is the first time Miami has had the good field position with their offense. Conlon coming out. Karpinski is in. And it's first down goal to go. Testaverde to throw. And it is there. One yard line. Charles Henry, the tight end. And he is upended by Marcus Henderson. Second down, goal to go at the one. All right, there you see from ground level, Testaverde looking at his tight end the entire way. He was the primary receiver in between the zone. It's unusual that a team will run the zone this far down inside their own territory. But Penn State is going to do it continually, and it's Charles Henry down in close. Bratton and Heisman are the running backs. It is Bratton over the top. He is met, but the ball just breaks a plane. That's all that it has to do. It is a touchdown. Scoring from a yard out. Mel 
Kelvin Bratton, who scored eight touchdowns during the season, scores the first touchdown of the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Here it is. You want to know why Melvin Bratton will be a first-round draft choice when he comes out of school? That's why. Because he's not afraid to throw his body around and leap over the top. He knows the linebacker is doing the same thing from the other line, the other side of the line of scrimmage, but he gets in for the touchdown. The extra point is up, and it is good. As Greg Cox has the extra point, and Bratton scores the touchdown. Penetration good. Good by the Penn State Nittany Lions on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage, but it's tough to do it when somebody goes over the top and Bratton gets the first score of the night. Miami 7 0 over Penn State. With six minutes and 38 seconds left to go in the first half, Melvin Bratton scoring the first touchdown of the ball game from a yard out. It was set up by Bill Hawkins with that interception. And the plays thus far and the total yardage thus far. Penn State to held to 20 total yards. Miami 204, 40 plays to 17. And Mark Seelig to kick off with Blair Thomas and Jim Coates set for the return. At the 15-yard line, here is Coates. Hit at the 20, slips a couple of tackles, and returns to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line, where Bernard Clark, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. With the ball. By 1986 Orange Bowl, 10 of 22, 74 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. Coming into this uh, 1986 football season, because of that performance, some of the Penn State fans were calling for Matt Kisner, the backup quarterback, to take over the reins for John Schaefer. That did not happen. Schaefer had a good football year. We'll find out if Joe Paterno decides to go with Kisner if this continues. And here's D.J. Dozier, and Dozier a little head fake, and he'll pick up about nine yards on the play. Vinny Blades makes the tackle. Dozier, six carries, 45 yards. His D.J., not his name. William Henry is his name. Why do they call him D.J.? His dad, uh, his dad name was Deacon. He was Deacon Jr., became D. Jr., and then D.J. Normal progression of a first name. Makes perfect sense to me, It does sir. to me, too. That's the scary part. All right. Second down and three, as they spotted at the 33-yard line. Dozier showing a little motion, and here's Steve Smith. Derwin Jones is there for the Canes defense. We said earlier that D.J. Dozier is a tough football player, but so is Meyer right down the bottom of your screen. There you see Dozier and Meyer going at it. A couple of blows by both sides. Hey, it's over, guys. You can stop it now, all right? Yeah, DJ points to hey, yeah. he, he was punching me. Third and one. A gain of a couple to the 35. It's going to be third down and one. George Meyer Jr., of course, his father, the great Miami quarterback. Roger has the first down and goes out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line as Don Ellis moved up from defensive cornerback. So we'll mark it at the 39 and a first down. And now back to the type of offense you expect to see from Penn State. And later in tonight's game, we'll be selecting the outstanding player from each team, and Sunkist will donate a total of $5,000 to each school's general scholarship fund in their names. But why wait an entire quarter to go to the offense that's carried you to 11 and 0? Here we go for a national championship football game, and Penn State is trying to throw the football with John Schaefer. As Bob said, that's not the way to get it done. And here is Schaefer again. They want to set a screen, and he throws it up for grabs, and it is tipped and knocked around, and is going to come up incomplete. Stubbs was putting the pressure on John Schaefer, and he just threw it up for grabs. He certainly did. Stubbs is the career sack leader at the University of Miami. He's got 30. He had 17 alone this past year. There you see the pressure from the top of the screen. He's running right past. We might have had a holding call over there by the offensive lineman for the Nittany Lions. He seemed like he had a handful. Number 57, Chris Conlon. And it was Schaefer who threw the ball away. And if it wasn't a good defensive play by D.J. Dozier to knock the ball down, it would have been an interception by the Hurricanes. And it's second and ten. And here is Dozier on the counter, started left, came back right, and sitting there waiting for him was Jerome Brown. So they'll lose a couple of yards, and let's go to Bob Greasy. 
loss of two yards on the play. Ball on the Jerome Brown point. is having an outstanding day, mainly a pass rusher. Jimmy, you ask about the change in thinking for Here's Penn State. Up. Joe Paterno told us yesterday he was going to change some things, both defensively and offensively, and obviously trying to throw first and run second has not worked for him tonight. And he has to throw here. It's third down and 12 deep over the middle. It is there. It is down. Eric Hamilton pulls it in. A big first down, converting on third and 12. Tolbert Bain makes the stop. And a gain of 23 yards. Jimmy. Good vision on the part of John Schaefer. Eric Hamilton was not his first choice for a receiver. There you see a couple of pumps. Then he finally pulls it back and delivers it. A good, strong throw. Tolbert Bain in to make the tackle. But good vision on the part of John Schaefer. And let's find out now if that good play by his part will affect his confidence and maybe get him to throw a few more completions or not. First down at the Miami 40-yard line. Miami out in front, 7 to nothing. Just under four minutes left to go in the first half. And here's D.J. Dozier stepping to the outside. Defense strings him out and pulls him down right at the 40-yard line. Tolbert Bain was there for the Canes. And it'll be second down and 10. Ball will be placed down on the 41-yard line. Check that, the 39-yard line. Second and 10 at the Miami 40. Jimmy Johnson, the head coach of the Canes. Tim Manoa, the first back through. And Manoa rambles to the 20 yard line. He has 20. Back to back plays of more than 40 yards. Randy Shannon with the tackle. And here's another look. Good blocking on the part of the offensive line of Penn State, opening a wide gap for the running back Tim to get up and through. They spot it at the 21 yard line, and it's a first down. And here's Manoa again. And he just plowed, ball pops loose, but the whistle had been blown at the 17 yard line. He'll have four. It's second down and six as George Meyer Jr. and Randy Shannon make the tackle. Tim Manoa is from Tonga, and his parents had never seen him play in a college football game. That until the, the Pittsburgh game, the last uh, regular season game for the Nittany Lions this past year, and the team, the Penn State uh, seniors and the rest of the club put a money together, enough money to send them from Tonga to watch their son play in the first ever college football game for them. Manoa comes out for a breather. Steve Smith comes in, and Schaefer to throw. And it is high and it is incomplete. He was going to Eric Hamilton. Don Ellis had the coverage. And it's going to be third down and six. Schaefer is now two of eight for 26 yards. And let's look at the reverse angle. This is a post corner. The receiver first broke toward the post then back to the corner. But a good play by the quarterback on that side, number 29, Don Ellis, to break it up. And it's third and six at the 17. 209. That is the time remaining in the first half. Miami leads 7-0. Here's Schaefer rolling and throwing. The pass is complete. And Noah has it, and he is out of bounds at the five-yard line. He picks up 12. It'll be first down and goal to go. As Penn State tries to piece together a 74-yard drive, Vinny Blades makes the tackle along with Victor Moore. Charlie, this is the type of passing that Schaefer can do best. Half row, throw to your back, the easy stuff. Don't get too sophisticated. It's important that he stays within himself and not try to be another Vinny Testaverde. And the Canes want a timeout, so they stop the clock with 2.02 left to go in the first half. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back. Miami leads the Nittany Lions. First round and goal to go. Penn State trying to go for the tie with 2.02 left to go in the first half. It's Manoa. Ball is loose, and it is recovered by Penn State. It was Darrell Giles who recovered the fumble. Second down goal to go at the four-yard line. Manoa spinning out to the left. Just knocked loose. Second and goal from the four. 
Offensive changes for Penn State. Defensive changes for Miami. Nine seconds now on the 25 second clock. Penn State will have to hurry. Three, two. They get it off with a second to go. Schaefer rolling, wants to throw. It's open to run. And he dives for it. And he's got it. John Schaefer from goat to hero as he scores the touchdown. Massimo Manko will now try to go for the tie. Matt Kisner to hold. Greg Truitt the snapper. And it's good. And we are tied at seven. All right, Schaefer on the bootleg. He's got two options here. Either to run it in or he has Cyberling, his favorite tight end, in the corner of the end zone. There you see that little fake helped him out. The defensive back leaped in the air, and it just gave Schaefer the corner of the end zone. He dives in for the score. 74 yards on the drive. The reaction of John Schaefer as he moves the Nittany Lions in 12 plays for the tie. We'll be back with a kickoff. A minute and 14 seconds left to go in the first half. Be sure to stay with us at halftime. Bob Costas, of course, will be here. Ahmad Rashad and Bob Costas will be live with President Reagan from the White House. Massimo Manka will be kicking off for Penn State. J.C. Penny, number 21, the deep back to return for the Canes. J.C., it's James Claw. And he was James, Jim, and Jimmy until the 11th grade when a... A writer in his hometown of Youngstown, Ohio, said, you know, James, that's J.C. And in one of the great names in sports. And in merchandising, too, of course. Manka kicking off. And Finney takes it at the one-yard line. J.C. to the 10. Has a block, makes a cut at the 20. Nice return to the 25-yard line. So he has 24 yards on the return. And the scoring drive of Penn State. 74 yards, 12 plays. Used up some time. 524 and Schaefer with that four-yard run. Up 24 yards on the play. Ball play and Miami now from their own 25-yard line with 107 left to go. Do you go deep right now? No, I, I still think you stay with your offense. They've got the ability to move it downfield. No sense in going deep right off the bat, although that's what Tess Purdy <laughs> likes to do. And has the time, and now. The time runs out as he goes short to Bratton, and it's incomplete. And it'll be second down and 10. Duffy Cobbs picked up the coverage. Miami with only one timeout remaining. Now 101 left to go at second and 10, back at their own 25. Charlie, I think what Penn State has done is frustrated Miami and Vinny Testaverde. They're not giving him anything deep, and I think Paterno is very happy to go in at halftime, 7-7. He said he hoped it would be a defensive struggle. Second and ten. Four out of the pattern. Here's pressure. A stiff arm pushes him away. Turns back. Fires pass is complete as he goes to Perryman. And he is cut down at the 35-yard line by Duffy Cobb. And it's right at the first down marker. And it is a first down. 51 seconds. That is the time remaining. And, of course... The clock wound when at the ready from the referee. Two-man rush by Penn State, and the pass is low to the outside and incomplete. Irvin, the intended receiver. And I think that the mind games of Joe Paterno is paying off because Testaverde is not as sharp with the long layoff that he said. Well, this is what they're doing unusually. The Nittany Lions are blitzing people, and, but they're playing zone behind it. Usually when you blitz somebody, before you mentioned the stiff arm that uh, Vinny Testaverde gave to number three, Marcus Henderson, he's the strong safety. Normally you would expect to find man-to-man -man coverage with that situation, but they're playing the zone, forcing Testaverde to try to find the open area. He does have open receivers, but he has to find them. Second down and 10. Four men on the rush. Goes deep to the left and finds him. This time it's Brian Blades. And Blades is out of bounds at the 42-yard line in Penn State territory. 
A gain of 23 yards on the play. Eddie Johnson was there for Penn State. We have 30 seconds left to go in the first half, and we are tied at seven. Seven seven tie as Perryman comes wide to the near side, and Irvin is in the slot right. Highsmith goes out in the pattern. Bratton stays in the block. And here's the pressure. Matt Patchen makes the play for Miami. And it will end up as a loss of 22, and Miami takes their last time out. So we'll take a timeout with 21 seconds left to go in the first half and be back in just a moment. Both backs stay in the block this time for Testaverde. He wants to go long and he does far side. And it is incomplete. Brian Blades, the intended receiver, and Eddie Johnson breaks it up. And it's going to be third down and 22 with 13 seconds left to go in the first half. Now 13 of 24, 161 yards, and a touchdown. 13 seconds left to go second quarter. Conlon comes on the blitz, can't get to him. Testaverde rolls, throws, passes complete to Irvin. Irvin heads for the sideline. He wants to stop the clock. He goes out at the 34-yard line with three seconds left, 23 yards on the play, and Mark Seelig is in with a field goal attempt. And he has hit this year from 47, 48, and 49 yards, but a flag back at the 44-yard line. And that's the reason you see Seeley coming back to the sideline. And the penalty will be marked off against Miami. And here's the call from Jimmy Harper. Beyond the line, we threw the ball. In loss eligible, of down. Ineligible receiver beyond the line when he threw the ball. And it is a loss of down. And they go with a straight handoff with Highsmith trying to break it up front. And he goes to the 42-yard line of Penn State as time runs out in the first half. He picks up 18 yards on the play, but the first half comes to a close, and we are tied at 7. The officials won't be there. Second half is underway. And Bratton takes it at the one-yard line. And Melvin is out to the 9, slips a tackle at the 10, makes a nice move. And returns to the 15-yard line. So he has 14 yards on the return for Melvin Bratton. We asked him, do you want Mel or Melvin? He said, Melvin, my mother prefers it. Here's a look at the statistics in the first half. Jimmy Cephalo. Well, yards passing, a key point to this game. John Schaefer, which is 38 yards and uh, completely outthrown uh, by the University of Miami and Vinny Testaverde. We expected that. The thing we did not expect is the time of possession. Look at it down there. 17 minutes for the University of Miami and just 12.50 for Penn State. We expected more running out of the Nittany Lions and maybe more time of possession on their side of the ball. A long layover at the end of the season. Now the two teams with a half underway. Let's see if they can turn loose here. And Bratton, the ball carrier, hit at the line of scrimmage, spins and... Picks up a couple to the 17. It's going to be second down and eight. Trey Bauer with the tackle. Testaverde tonight. And that's his attempts, completion, and yardage. Spaced out. 10 yards, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and more than 30. As you see down the bottom of the screen, very few completions between 20 and 29 yards. Just one none past 30 yards. That's because of the deep zones that the Penn State uh, defensive backs are playing. Second and eight. Testaverde, little play action. As time drops it over the middle, it's dropped. Alvin Highsmith. He's a good receiver, too. He just, that happens. You just drop one. Well, he's more than just a good receiver. He really has done a lot for the Miami offensive passing game because a good blocking fullback is not expected to be that good of a receiver, but he can do it all in here. Crossing action underneath with the two backs, a check down, a little bit of a dump pass on the part of Testaverde, and he starts running before he has it uh, firmly in his grasp. Third down and eight. First third down opportunity of the second half. Testaverde far side. Irvin juggles it. And it is incomplete. So two opportunities slipping away from the hurricane. Highsmith and Irvin. And it is fourth down and eight. Uh, Penn State said coming into this game they had, they were going to allow Miami to catch the short balls, but they had to come up and hit him. What happens to a receiver sometimes, if you go across the middle, catch a ball and get hit, enough times you start looking behind you and not concentrating on the football. Michael Irvin did it that time and dropped the ball. Beagles with his second kick. He gets it off. A flag is down. He was hit. 
They'll bring it all back. Here's Coates on the return. There was running into the kicker. 51 yards on the kick, a six-yard return. They're going to bring it back. Now, remember, it was fourth down and eight. And, of course, as you know, in college ball, you can be blocked into the kicker. Still a foul. And let's see what happens. Ray Isom has a clear shot to it. The fullback comes over and does hit him. But as you said, Charlie, Isom could not help yep. it. But it is still a foul still in a college foul. football. Yes. And they bring it out to the 22-yard line. Five yards. Here's the call. And the officials calling for a timeout. And this is the head coach, Jimmy Johnson. Of course, now he can, if he thinks that there's been a misinterpretation of the rules, then he can call for a conference, not for a judgment call, but for a rule conference. So he may want to, in this case, if it is not enough for the first down, he may want to refuse it and take the kick because it was an excellent kick. And that is what the call is going to be. 51 yards and a six-yard return, yes. You got to do it again. You can't get much better than that. He is blocked into it, but as you can see, Daryl Oliver, number 37, with the block, and there's no way that Ray Isom can get out of the way of Eagles punting the football. But in college ball, again, that is a flag. And Jimmy uh, Johnson with the good call because it was a great punt, and Penn State will take over possession at their own 38-yard line. It was five yards on the penalty and not an automatic first down, and that's the reason they went back and took the punt. And Penn State has the ball at their own 38-yard line first down. Going with a double tight end set. And Pomford in motion. And here's Dozier. And Dozier just fights his way to the 42-yard line. Four tough yards. And it's going to be second down and six. As Winston Moss was there, Rod Carter was there, and George Myers. So all three linebackers got into the play. And there is George Meyer. Notice the gloves that he has. Those are really offensive lineman gloves, and he's taken the padding out and cut the fingers out to give him a better touch, a well, better feel. You mentioned a running back taking a beating with his hands. So does a middle linebacker delivering those forearms. They also have the hands of 65-year-old men. Yes. Second and six. They were taking a lot of time. A fumble on the snap from center, and Miami says they have the ball. Penn State says they have it. Let's see what the officials say. Penn State retains possession at the 42 yard line it's going to be third down and six and you will recall in the first half that Miami's touchdown came on a 23 yard drive and that was after Bill Hawkins we thought it was a fumble recovery but it ended up an interception because the ball never got to the ground set it all up and it's third down and six Jerry Huggin is a wide receiver and Schaefer back to throw, and here comes the pressure. Pretty good protection. Tipped it's in the air. A diving interception. They say no. Could not get to it. And that was Selwyn Brown trying to get there. Brian Syverling, the intended receiver, is going to be fourth down and six. And that means that John Bruno will be kicking, and David Kintai will be the return man for the Canes. And John Bruno had excellent exhibition of punting in the first half. Well, he's been Penn State's best weapon thus far. He put a couple of balls inside the 10-yard line, as you see, a 42-point average. And this is his fifth punt. Here's pressure, and he gets it off. And again, it was Bubba McDowell with the pressure. Kintai at the 20 to the 25, and nailed at the 27-yard line. 39 yards on the kick with an 8-yard return. Bubba McDowell, who almost got to the punt, had five blocks during the regular season. We've got a timeout, and we are tied at 7. A little over a half, and have only scored seven points. The key here is patience. And Testaverde rolling left. Has lots of time. He goes deep. Urban battling for the ball. It is incomplete. Outstanding defensive play by Eddie Johnson. So Testaverde now 13 of 27, 161 yards and a touchdown. Really, that's the first time that he has just gone for all the marbles. It is now Irvin downfield. Testaverde scrambling around. Normally, a quarterback is not able to throw the ball that far. The crowd is booing because they want an interference call on Michael Irvin, but he was going after the football, and no call is made. Nice play by number 39, Eddie Johnson. And that is Testaverde's first attempt for more than 30 yards in one fell swoop. And it's second down and 10. 
Miami at their own 26 yard line. We're tied 7 7. Just over 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. Testaverde steps away, steps away again. Got out of the arms of two rushers, and finally the third man gets it. Shane Conlon finally got it. Don Graham was also there. Testaverde is strong. Oh, he's, he's got strong. a lot of strength. He squats 500 pounds. He's 6'5", 218 pounds. Now watch him here. Two defensive players have a shot at him. He's looking downfield, puts the ball in his other arm. He can't get it. First of all, he gets away from Don Graham, and then another player takes a shot. No luck there, and it takes Shane Conlon, the All-American number 31, to finally come up and make the tackle. I think the only thing brought him down this past season was that motorbike, wasn't it? And a bag of hamburgers. And a bag of hamburgers, <laughs> that's right. Third down and 12. There's pressure again. He gets it off. The pass is complete. Not going to be a lot of yardage, but Perryman spins away. He almost got away. And it's fourth down. Eddie Johnson makes the play. The Nittany Lion defense now taking over control of the ball again. Early on, it was the Kane defense of Miami. And now Jeff Beagles will be kicking. And Jim Coates is the return man. There's a look at Beagles. And there's Coates. Fourth down and six. And Coates takes it at the 22. And there's going to be a tripping called against Penn State. 46 yards on the punt, a three yard return, and flags were dropped. And it's going to be a clip call on the Nittany line. Daryl Fullington was down very quickly for Miami. And there's the clip call. We've got a timeout. 10.59. That is the time remaining. We are in the third quarter. It is 7 and 7 battling for number one. Out of Cincinnati, Ohio, 3 of 10, 38 yards. We mentioned this number at the top of the telecast. As a starter, starting quarterback, since the seventh grade, 65 and 1, only one defeat. But Bob, he's having a terrible night. He's having a tough time, Charlie. I'll get back to it after this play. Okay, let's see what he does here. First down for Penn State at the 13. And he gives to D.J. Dozier. And D.J. out to the 16-yard line. We'll give him three. It's going to be second down and seven. Dan Cilio with the tackle, along with George Meyer. Charlie, what Miami, what Miami did on the first series coming out of the second half, they took their strong safety out and put a fourth linebacker in. They're playing a gap eight, and they're saying, you try and throw on us. Obviously, you're not going to be uh, able to run very well against the gap eight type of defense, but they're forcing Schaefer to make the plays. They say, you beat us. And it's second down and six. And here is Dozier. And he slips through and still keeps going. And one of the problems with the gap eight when you put so many men up front is that if you can get past them, you can pass those eight men up front, you've got some running room. You do, and many clubs have gone to the gap eight against Penn State or an inverted defense where they take the strong safety and put him into a position as another linebacker. Here it is here, number 22, Shannon on the outside going in to make the tackle, but not good enough. Dozier is known as a knuckleball runner, and you see why. It's tough to get a good shot at him. He continually spins, has good late drive, and gets enough yardage for the first down. He picks up 15 to the 32, and it is a first down. Now with 10-15 left to go in the third, and we are tied at 7-7. Schaefer back to throw. This time stands in to Dozier. Dozier spins away, and he's to the 41-yard line. So he'll pick up nine on the play. It's going to be second down and one. And Myra makes the tackle. Charlie, what you like to do is throw short. To try and beat this gap eight, what you're going to have to do is fake. He looked downfield. There was nothing there. He's looking for Cyberly. 91 is tied in. And if he doesn't have his tight end, he likes to go back to his halfback. This is a halfback tight end offense. In fact, in the last four games, Cyberling and Dozier together a total of 25 receptions. That's the last four games of the regular season. You saw flags went down. So you're right. They ended up the season with an offense to the, uh, to the running back and to the tight end. And they just pick it up here. Charlie, to go back and explain what a gap eight defense is it's simply a defensive man in every gap of the offense between the guard and tackle between the, the uh, guard and center all the way down the line so it's tough to get any blocking lanes 
and any place to run the football. Well, what it comes down to then, Miami's going to say, go ahead, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us on the arm of John Schaefer or not at all. Exactly. And the penalty against Miami for five yards, and it is a first down, and here's Dozier with the counter, and he slips a tackle. He'll pick up a yard, maybe two on the play. Rod Carter, the linebacker, was there to meet him. And he likes to run this counter. A little counter step to the right and come back to the left. They'll swing everybody to the right side and bring only one blocker in front of him. Well, they pull that onside guard, and he's got to follow the block of the guard, and he's been reading it much better. As a freshman, as a sophomore, yes, he had some more yards, but he felt that he was not running behind a blocker as well. Now as a senior, he's setting his blocks up, and he has become the punishing runner that he was early in his career. And now replaced by the sophomore, Blair Thomas, who many feel uh, is going to be just as good, if not better. And the gift of the first back is Steve Smith. And Miami is waiting for this one. Dozier, by the way, 13 carries and 70 yards rushing thus far. And the clock continues to tick in the second half. And we're moving on eight and a half minutes, time remaining in the third. So the gap eight works now, third and eight situation. And obviously it's passing down. And that's what Miami wanted to do, force John Schaefer to throw the football. So it's third down and eight. A look at the clock. We're in the third and tied at 7-7 in the battle for the national championship. And let's watch from the end zone. We're looking now through the defense of the cave. And you can see exactly what Bob Reese was talking about with the set of the eight players. In the gaps, it is up. It is in the air. It is intercepted. It is Selwyn Brown. And Brown to the 40-yard line of Penn State. 18 yards on the interception return by Selwyn Brown who this past season did not have an interception. Well, he was injured for most of the year, Charlie, and now healthy once again for this football game. Dozier's upset about something. He was on the sideline, was not on the field to play for that particular down, and ran onto the field, wanted to make his opinion down to the officials on the field, and they are discussing it, John Schaefer and D.J. Dozier, but they will not win the argument. 23-yard line and went in to score. They scored in four plays. And here's Highsmith. The sweep to the right side. Turns the corner and is spun under at the 33-yard line. He's got seven at second down and three as Duffy Cobbs makes the play. Boy, Duffy Cobbs has done everything. Yeah, Duffy Cobbs is a big hitter on the outside, but when you run into somebody as big as Alonzo Highsmith, this is what you get. Highsmith, again, he's a linebacker playing fullback. He doesn't care about his body. He just wants to get an extra yard. 65 yards in 13 carries for Highsmith. Warren Williams checks into the offense. Second down and three. Just a birdie to throw. Here's pressure from the outside. Pass is complete. First down, it is Williams. And Williams is stacked up at the 24-yard line. Keith Karpinski was there for Penn State. Let's take a look back at that interception just a moment ago. The wide receiver downfield, that's Ray Roundtree, a crossing pattern. It's trying to go in between the zone and a poor selection on the part of John Schaefer. Obviously, Roundtree not open, and Brown with the interception and got a lot of yardage out of it, setting Miami up in good scoring position. And you saw what D.J. Dozier was complaining about. That was an illegal chuck that was downfield because he was already past him. You can chuck anywhere in college football. There's movement. And as long as you stay in front of him. But if he gets past you and you hit him, it's illegal. As long as the receiver is in position to block a defensive back, then there can yeah. be contact. Yeah. But once he gets a stride of him or beyond, there cannot be any contact. And there was contact. They got away with one. This is procedure call against Maddox. Well, let's take a look right at it and see if there is or not. No, I think so. Downfield, of course there is. Hamilton, Downfield, yeah. that's right. Number 30, Hamilton is yeah. the one that was bumped. Yeah. And with the penalty, the ball goes back now to the 29-yard line. We'll mark it the 30-yard line. And it's first down and 15. Penalty yardage, as you see. And just averting the throw. Has all the time in the world. Slips a tackle and then is dropped at the 28-yard line. And we've got some pushing downfield, but that's to be expected. James, second and 14, the ball to 29. He just pushes everybody out of the yeah, way. Yeah, he does three and a quarter, he benches. That's Charles Henry, the tight end to the 21-yard line. 
Well, you'll pick up about seven on the play. It's going to be third down and around seven to go. Conlon again making the tackle. And remember Shane Conlon with that knee problem early on in the ball game, and obviously it wasn't anything of any consequence, but he's been back ever since then. He's not been as big a factor as we thought coming into the football game. Penn State likes to move him around. Strong safety even on occasion is a down lineman or somewhere anywhere in the linebacking crew. But maybe because of that injury, we don't know. He simply has not been as big a factor as we thought he would be. Now Penn State with five linebackers in this set. Tester early, 16 of 30, 184 yards. As time slips a bit, throws, it's intercepted by Conlon. Conlon stumbles and falls. I think he saw six points. I think he heard me from up here, too. <laughs> Testaverde with a poor selection, threw it right in the hands of Shane Conlon. He was open. He was the only one open on the play. Take another look at it. Shane Conlon, the middle of your screen. Trey Bauer, number 35, moving back. A big zone. Now, where is he throwing the football? Trying to fit it in between, but it's Conlon, the only one in the area. And if he doesn't stumble, he gets a few more yards. We're tied at 7-7. We'll be back. For 31, All-America Shane Conlon with that interception. Eric Hamilton in motion. And Tim Manoa, the ball carrier. Gain of six to the 31. Second down and four as Dan Stubbs makes a tackle. We're moving on the five minute mark. Time remaining in the third quarter and we are tied at 7-7. The turnover is Miami three and Penn State two. And these two ball clubs rank very highly in the Division I statistical group of turnovers and takeaways. In fact, Charlie, Penn State has not fumbled their last three football games, and Miami has only caught the ball up ten times on fumbles this year. Here's a fumble. And Miami has the ball. Winston Moss recovers the fumble. And just as you say it, here it is. That's that direct line down to the helmets of the players again on the field. Take a look at it from the reverse angle. It doesn't appear that anybody touches the running back. Tim Manoa just pops straight out of his arms. Very little pressure from anyone. That's all on Manoa. It seems it was a good handoff on the part of John Schaefer. And a first down for Miami at the Penn State 31. And the give is to the second back through Warren Williams. And Williams goes to the 25-yard line. He's got six. And it'll be second down and four. Four and a half minutes. That is the time remaining in the third as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. It is Miami seven and Penn State seven. And there's a look at the disappointed Tim Manoa. Second and four. A little play action fake. And Testaverde is brought down by Pete Giftopoulos. And very seldom do you see that happen. Giftopoulos with his first sack. And that is the third for Penn State. We're really waiting for him to step away from that would be sad. That is the first time that uh, he was tackled uh, from the first player that got to him. It seemed to be a mistake on the part of the University of Miami. Either that or it was a naked bootleg. You see the miscues on the part of the Hurricanes. A lot of drop passes and three turnovers. Eight penalties. They have set a team record this year for the most amount of penalty yards. It's 770 on the year. They seem to be continuing that trend tonight. Third down and 12. Back at the 32. And Testaverde rolling right. And he throws deep. Has a man urban and he trips. They're going to call pass interference on Penn State. And I must tell you, I'm not sure of that call. I thought it was an inadvertent tripping. And, of course, it's a 15-yard penalty if it is pass interference in college football. Not at the spot of the foul unless it's less than 15 yards. Well, when you're a receiver, there is no such thing as inadvertent tripping. You can see it appears that way, though nobody was going for the football. It was a little bit overthrown. They just got tangled up right at the end. Number three, Marcus Henderson going after it. Ray Isom is he, the one He called. trips on himself. He does. He tripped he over trips his on himself. Too. Now, what you're looking at here is the reason that there is an instant replay in the National Football League. He trips himself. 
Now, they don't have instant replay here. They're not in college football, but that's the kind of call that instant replay was created for. Let's take another closer look. Watch Michael Irvin, his two feet from this angle. A little tough to see, but it does not appear that Ray Isom, number 22, ran into him at all. No, from the other angle, you can tell. Do we have that other angle again? Here it is. Now, watch his feet. He trips himself. There, he's not tripped. There, he's not tripped. He no. hooks himself. Whoop. down at the 17-yard line. And Williams is pulled back. All right, we're going to take one more look, and then we're going to bury this one. Because <laughs> we've taken it up. But let's take one more look. Hey, everybody makes mistakes. All right, now, is there any body action between number 22, Isom, or not? It doesn't appear to be. It just appears to be simply Michael Irvin tripping himself. And a bad call. But it is second down. The ball at the 14-yard line, second down and seven. Oh, you hope that the number one doesn't fall on, on that one call. Here's Warren Williams to the 11, has three. So it's going to be third down and three. Charlie, I disagree. Okay. I think Isom did trip him, and if we can get another look at that sometime, I think that there was some tripping, and uh, Irvin did not trip himself. Did my eyes deceive me? Well, I'm sure we'll have another look at the uh, opportunity. Well, I we put it away, but I can bring it, it back. Okay. But, um, All right, they're searching for it in the trucks. All right, here it is. All right, Bob. There we go. He beats the jam. Yeah. Now watch right next step. Right there. You see it? Isom 22 hit his left foot and tripped him. No, I think that he hit Isom's left ankle. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> you always did have those good eyes, Bob. <laughs> and, and I guess that's the reason that they don't have replays. We want to get down to Third down. It is. What happened? Did a receiver slip? There was nobody over there. That might have been a mistake on the part of the receiver. There you see Testaverde looking at his receiver and pointing downfield. He might have made an adjustment on the move, and the thing is, the receiver and the quarterback have to make the same adjustment. That's how you get interceptions when they don't make the adjustment. Testaverde looking over there the entire way. He knew what he wanted, the quick out. The receiver, on the other hand, goes inside on the pattern, and the mix-up and the signals on the part of the Hurricanes. And a 28-yard field goal attempt by Mark Selig with David Kintai holding. Mike Pigza, the snapper. It is no good. It is off to the right. And the score remains Miami 7, Penn State 7, with two minutes and eight seconds left to go. We're in the third quarter, and the battle for number one continues. Another look at the hole. All right, the snapper is Mike Pigza, who's had trouble. He suffered a, a colon problem early in the season. It's all padded up. Kintai gets a bad snap and does not get it clearly placed on the tee. And it's a missed field goal on the part of the Hurricanes and Mark Seeley. He showed Miami has the ball of the 20. That's right. Now, that was the problem. They, they told us earlier in the week there have been some problems with their snapping game. Because of the uh, rupture colon, Mike Pigsa has not been snapping all year. He's all padded up, had trouble with the snap there, and Kintai unable to put it down. And here's D.J. Dozier. And just a couple of yards on the play, out to the 22-yard line, where George Mara, the leading tackler for the Canes, along with Dan Stubbs, who's the number two tackler, both bring him down. And it'll be second down and eight. 145 and counting down. That is the time remaining in the third quarter, and we are still tied. Miami 7 and Penn State 7. As Hamilton goes wide to the far side and Roundtree wide to the near side, and Hamilton comes in motion, but if he throws, usually to Dozier or to the tight end. Baker steps away. A little puff fake, and he's going to be wrapped up at the 20-yard line. As Dan Stubbs got him, when Schaefer came out, Stubbs was just standing over there waiting for him, like he used a safety valve in case that happened. Well, Stubbs has the ability to collapse a pocket. He runs extremely well. As you see, four sacks on the day and many pressures, many of them coming on the part of Dan Stubbs. And we're back now to third down and ten. And 
you look for Schaefer to throw here and he has not been successful throwing. Little play action doesn't put him on the shovel pass underneath and it's going to be incomplete. Is that a gadget play? Well, that's the old Utah pass, the shuffle pass. Underneath, they're trying to go to Steve Smith, number 33, the fullback. Unfortunately, the timing was messed up, and it seemed that an offensive lineman touched the football before Smith had an opportunity to do so. Now, that is a forward pass, even though it is flipped that way, and just an incomplete pass and not a fumble. And if you notice the numbers on the jerseys, it is 11 to 11. John Bruno kicking, and David Kintai with the return. And once again, Bubba McDowell almost gets to the ball. At the 35, Kintai is going to lose about three on the return. 45 yards on the kick, a loss of three on the return. The Canes have the ball with 30 seconds to go in the third as Quintus McDonald was down very quickly for Penn State. Whoop. With third, has the ball at their own 33-yard line. In the second half, Vinny Testaverde has completed only three of eight passes for 23 yards, and he has been intercepted one time. But Penn State has not been able to capitalize. We're still tied at 7-7. That was a score at halftime. And here's Bratton. And Melvin has a couple of yards to the 35. It'll be second down and eight as Matt Johnson and Don Graham make the tackle for the Nittany Lions and will take the countdown here to the end of the quarter. Miami may go ahead and get a playoff. Let's see if they do. That's the game clock, not the 25 seconds. And he gets it off with a second. Testaverde drops it over the middle. This one is Highsmith. He has it, and he has the first down as he goes to the 46-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. So are the Canes underway as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. We have three complete. We have one to go. We are tied 7-7, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. We are 15 minutes away from a national champion or national champions. There will be no playoff. Here are the statistics through three. Very similar to the first half statistics. Miami still with the edge in total yardage and maintaining about a six-minute uh, time of possession lead. But Penn State tried to run the football more in the third quarter. Got a little bit more successful, but as you see yards rushing, just 93 for the Nittany Lions, down from their normal output through the year. And a first down for Miami from the 46, Testaverde to throw. It is intercepted by Gatopoulos. To the 45, to the 40. And down at the 36-yard line, Daryl Oliver made the tackle 24 yards on the return. Four turnovers by Miami. Three interceptions. Let's take a look at it from the secondary. You see the deep zone one more time. Shane Collin in the middle of the field. It's another unusual wrinkle on the part of the Penn State defense that confused Testaverde one more time. And it's Giptopoulos with the interception, his second of the night, and he puts the Penn State offense in good position. At the 36-yard line, first down, Miami Territory. DJ Dozier, and he goes out of bounds. It'll be second down. Joe Paterno has uh, made the Penn State uh, football tradition out of defense through the years. That's the way he's gone the entire way. You're not going to see a lot of flashy things on the part of the offense. And people talk about his uniforms and his style of play uh, going in sync with the way that he uh, uh, he performs on the football field. But it is all defense. It is not a flashy offense. You're not going to see many reverses on the part of the Nittany Lions. Second down and seven. Hamilton in motion. Steve Smith and he well we'll give him a yard to the 32 it's going to be third down and six Jerome Brown was there let me make a correction if Topolis has an interception Duffy Cobbs has an interception Shane Conlon has the interception those are the three interceptions and Duffy Cobbs also has a fumble recovery for the Canes Winston Moss with a fumble recovery Selwyn Brown has the interception Bill Hawkins has the interception that's all the turnovers let me just update that for us at the 32 third down and six Schaefer with pressure and is knocked away. And 
it will be fourth down. So the Nittany Lions unable to capitalize on the turnover, and Massimo Manka comes in. His career long is 53 yards. This last season, he hit from 49, and he has hit eight of his last 11. And this one will be from 50 yards away to take the lead for the first time. Matt Kisner to hold, and Greg Truitt is the snapper. That's way short. So Massimo misses from 50. And we remain tied at 7-7. And we have 14 minutes and one second left in this national championship battle. And here's Melvin Bratton. Shoots to the right side. And once again, the defense is there. And Bob Greasy, we were talking about this during the timeout. It has been a defensive ball game. It's a defensive game, Charlie. Neither team looking that good on offense. You know, it's almost fitting. This is a national championship game. And you say you win championships with your defense. The offense sells the tickets, but the defense win the championships, and that's what you're seeing here tonight. So you don't think we're seeing a sloppy offensive game that the defenses are just dominating both sides? I think you're seeing a sloppy offensive <laughs> game because of the defense. Okay. All right. Second and 11. Testaverde to throw over the middle. Here's Bratton. And he's out to the 44, maybe the 45-yard line. And he's got the first down. Bauer with the tackle and a gain of 12 yards on the play. And the running backs, uh, Melvin Bratton and Alonzo Highsmith, are playing a more important factor as we go down through the fourth quarter because the Penn State deep zones are taking it away, the deep passing game of Vinny Testaverde. There you see a comparison. Schaefer just 4 of 14. Testaverde just under 50%. And a 200-yard difference. And he comes down at the Penn State 48-yard line. Eddie Johnson was the man who hit it. And it's going to be second down and a couple after he picks up eight yards on the play. And I'm wondering now if the Canes are going to stay on the ground. They have a great running attack. You know, their, their, their rushers average, you know, 4.2, 5.8. You know, high numbers. As far as rushing yardage is concerned, they'll go to the rushing attack and then they get away from it. Maybe they'll stay with it here as Highsmith slips. He may break clean. He's to the 30 and goes to the 27-yard line. 19 yards. Check that 21 yards. Isom and Henderson finally ride him down. And who else to go to in, in this situation but Alonzo Highsmith? You want to know who Vinny Testaverde's vote for the Heisman Trophy was? That man sitting on the ground with a leg cramp, Alonzo Highsmith. He thinks he's the best football player in the country, and he shows you why on that run. They may win the championship with a running game. And here's Bratton, and he is pushed out of bounds. Don Graham bumped him out. It would be hard to take the ball out of Testaverde's hands, but perhaps in this case you have to. Well, when you take a look at the entire Miami offense, they're skilled people. You've got a bunch of first-round draft choice. Obviously, Testaverde, Melvin Bratton, we mentioned earlier, will be one when he graduates. Alonzo Highsmith is the best fullback in the country coming into the draft this year. So who do you give the football to? There's only one ball. If you could cut it up in four or five spots, Miami would have a heck of a deal. And you'd have had more receptions when you were playing. I didn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Second and nine at the 27. Now they'll throw. Here's Testaverde rolling. And it is pulled down. No. He did not get the one foot inbounds. Brian Blades, the intended receiver. Now, Testaverde going to his left. Not a lot of people realize this, but Testaverde right-handed. He throws. He bats. And he shoots a bow and arrow. He left. shoots a Shoot. bow and arrow left-handed? Right-handed. Right-handed. Left-handed, he writes, sides autographs, left-handed. He eats left-handed, and he shoots a gun left-handed. And that is an incredible catch by Blades on the corner. He'd need one foot down in college ball, of course, just outside of the boundary. So it's not hard for Testaverde to go to his left or his right. Third down and nine. Pass is complete. To Bratton, and Bratton is down at the 21-yard line, so he'll have about six on the play. And it's going to be fourth down and three. Now, do you go with a field goal attempt? First half of the ballgame, 
You bet you, you do. Similar, similar situation. They went hey, for the first down. National championship football game, 21 yards at seven, 28 yards. you got to go for the field goal and take the lead. The Miami defense has done a good job, and it's in the hands right now, or at least the foot, of Mark Seeley. From 38 yards away, and Seeley, remember, missed from 28 yards. This is from 38 yards. And it is good from 38 yards away. And Miami leads for the second time in the ballgame. The score, the Canes 10, the Nittany Lions 7 will be back with a kickoff. Miami 10, Penn State 7. And the reaction of Joe Paterno. He's saying, let's go, let's go, let's get it back. All right. Let's see if they can. Coates and Thomas are the deep backs. Coates is 49 on the right. Blair Thomas is 32 on the left. 11 minutes and 49 seconds left to go for the national title. And Miami is up by three. Thomas at the eight yard line to the 20 and he just scrambles out to about the 28 yard line so we'll give him 20 yards on the return and Penn State goes to work in their own territory. So now we find out what kind of a winner John Schaefer was we mentioned 65 and one since the seventh grade. You know, they've said about him in the past, he doesn't throw very well, he doesn't run very well, but he does win football games. Those same words were first used by Rip Engel, the head coach at Brown, when he was describing a skinny little scrawny left-handed quarterback by the name of Joe, Joe Paterno. Paterno. And we have on the ground, that's Quintus McDonald, who is down with a leg cramp. And so the clock is stopped with 11.44 left to go. We'll take an injury timeout. The Canes leading the Nittany Lions by 3, 10 to 7. All right, we have 11 minutes and 44 seconds. And a first down. And here is Dozier. And he stumbles a bit as he makes his move. Penn State averaging only three yards per play tonight on offense. And that, of course, is a credit also to the Kane defense. Hurricane defense has really played well. Oh, yeah, they've got a lot of players back there as well. Benny Blaze. Now, here's a player, All-American consensus. We haven't talked about uh, a lot tonight, but that's because Joe Paterno said, we've got to stay away from Benny Blaze if we want to win the football game. Seems like they've been doing it all night long. Second down, Schaefer to throw. There's pressure, and he's sacked. Uh, sacks and Rod Carter and Jerome Brown team up for this one. Woo. Brown and Carter coming from the same side they said earlier they've got a double team Brown are they trying to he just bullying his way through and then from the back side that's Rod Carter with a big sack hey it's tough when you've got people that's salute all right Jerome <laughs> They came in dressed in battle fatigues, and They're that ready. was a salute to the captain on the sideline. <laughs> Third down and 18. And here's Dozier. Dozier to the 30. Dozier to the 35. And he's going to be about four yards shy of the first down. Selwyn Brown with the tackle. He picks up 13. He needed 18. And that means that John Bruno will come in to punt. Dozier now has rushed for 91 yards. Ten minutes exactly left to go. It'll be Bruno to David Kintai. <laughs> There's pressure every time coming from Bubba McDowell. And he's Kintai to the 20, and he'll be racked up at the 21-yard line. 48-yard kick, a five-yard return. And Kurt Bernier is the man who was down as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. And the Canes have the ball. And here's Melvin Bratton. And Bratton goes to the 34-yard line. So he picks up 13 yards in the first down. Don Graham makes the tackle. 
Melvin Bratton runs like a little bumblebee. He's got good size, not a great blocker, but he can really buzz around the defense. We mentioned earlier that Highsmith is uh, coming up to 100 yards rushing against the Penn State defense that has not done it this year. Well, Highsmith has not had 100 yards. The only one for Miami to do it has been Melvin Bratton. And here is Bratton. And this time he'll lose a step. They're going to mark at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second down and 10 as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. Okay. Now we're moving on the nine minute mark and early on everyone expected that Penn State wanted to use up the clock. Now the Canes with the lead albeit three points 10 seven. He could be content with running some time down. Second down. Testaverde with both backs into block throws and it is intercepted. for Penn State two for Conlon 38 yards on the return five yard line first down goal to go with a national championship in the ballot remember when you were a kid growing up you dreamt about things like maybe playing at a national championship football game fourth quarter you're down by three points you make a big interception that's exactly what Shane Conlon did and his dreams of his youth may come true tonight. From the power up. A scramble for the ball. There was a misconnection on the snap. And it will be second down goal to go. Keith Radicek, the center, senior from Pittsburgh. His brother Scott, a linebacker with Kansas City. He just doesn't get the ball or maybe he's starting to pull out a little bit too. what happens is the center starts his block before the center gets the ball obviously it's not a it's not a smooth snap but the center has got to snap the ball first and then get to his block and Penn State wants a timeout to talk it over we'll be back in just a moment says you're in my way scoot over there and it's as if Testaverde saw the inside linebacker but not Conlon tried to throw it over his head and was picked off by Conlon for the second time today and Trey Bauer, the inside linebacker, who then came up and was doing the congratulations. And the ball now at the six-yard line after the miscue on the snap. Second down goal to go. Testaverde really sitting on the sideline. Manoa and Dozier, the running back. And it's Dozier. Dozier scores! minutes and 13 seconds left in the ball game and now the extra point attempt Massimo Manco and it is good Penn State 14 Miami 10 the replay for the score Dozier takes it wide and cuts back between Nice block by Keith Radisek, number 56, the center, in for the score and a Penn State lead. And it is set up by the Penn State defense and is set up by a Penn State linebacker, Shane Conlon, with the interception. Six yards on the five yards on the drive in two plays. And the score coming from six yards out, of course, the fumble, the loss of a yard. And it's 14-10, but a lot of time for the Canes. Eight minutes and 13 seconds, and they have the arm of Vinny Testaverde, and he has not been playing that well thus far. But can he do it? Here's another look at DJ Dozier. The 
DJ, a very religious young man. In fact, when we were shooting the headshot to all the players on Sunday, he was with a group of five, the last ones to be shot because he came back from church. And that's exactly, he wasn't tired at the end. He was kneeling down in prayer, and it's, it's a ritual that he goes through after every touchdown. Only the second man in Penn State history, as you saw, to rush for more than 3,000 yards. And Massimo Manka to kick off. And Bratton is the deep back. And this is down in the end zone for the touchback. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Here's Alonzo Highsmith to the 25, the 30, 35, he's to the 40, and down at the 42-yard line, it was Duffy Cobbs who saved the day, or he could well have scored. And apparently Alonzo Highsmith had that same dream as a young man about being the hero of a national championship football game. Again, the linebacker playing fullback, refusing to go down, running over people. Ray Isom, he runs over one time. Another defender, he still refuses to fall on the ground. And Alonzo, 114 yards rushing in 16 carries. 42-yard line, first down. And here he comes again. And he has four yards to the 46. Second down and six. Let's go back to your story, Bob. In last year's Sugar Bowl game, Testaverde threw three interceptions, was sacked eight times, and Paterno called Majors for the film, and Johnny Majors says, no, I know Jimmy Johnson. And Paterno turned to his assistant and says, I want that film. Just get it. I don't know. I don't care how you get it. And Paterno told us the other day, said, well, we got it, but I don't know where we got it from. Melvin Bratton helped to his feet, maybe just a little late cramp. That was, the, that, that's all that, is, that was the worst game that Testaverde has had in his career up until this point. He is not playing well tonight, and it's because, I think, that Penn State is doing several different things and has confused him and, and frustrated him, taking away those big plays. Well, you made the statement earlier that Joe Paterno wanted to get inside of his head and cause a little confusion. You know, as a quarterback, that can be deadly if they can do it. And here's Testaverde to throw. Let's see if he can come back, and he does as he goes to Alfredo Roberts, his tight end. Seven minutes and 12 seconds left for the title. From Paramus, New Jersey, watch number 35. From the reverse angle, this time Testaverde wanted to go downfield to Michael Irvin, but he was being covered by Shane Conlon. And there's the fumble on the part of Alfredo Roberts, clearly on his way down. Trey Bauer making sure, number 35, that he doesn't get anywhere near that fumble. The ball at the Miami 49-yard line and a first down for Penn State. And now Schaefer steps away, and the Nittany Lions stop the clock with seven minutes and 12 seconds left. They lead 14 to 10, and we'll be back in just a moment to the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. All players, but to get in this situation, and they're all human, and Alfredo Roberts feeling it now. Dozier back to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be second down and 10. We've talked about. The miscues of Miami, here they are, six turnovers, one missed field goal, five drop passes. They allowed three sacks, penalized eight times. And they trail by four, 14 to 10. And, of course, that's just one play away from the arm of Vinny Testaverde. Don't forget that. And it is second down and 10. And Schaefer to throw. And his pass is complete at the 43-yard line to Brian Cyberling, the tight end who is a member of the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete, was named as one. George Meyer Jr. there for the defense, 43-yard line, gain of six. Third down and four, and the clock ticks away. And Alfredo Roberts getting the condolences of his teammates, saying, keep your head up, hey, and you're right, Charlie. One pass by Vinny Testaverde gets this football game right back and a national championship as well. And here is Schaefer with pressure. He throws and is knocked away. He was going to Ray Roundtree, and Don Ellis made the defensive play. And once again, the balance could well hang on the foot of John Bruno, who has had an excellent evening kicking. Particularly early in the ballgame, he really kept the Nittany Lions in the game. 
And David Kintai is set for the return. This is the eighth punt for John Bruno. He caught it down and it gets away. Slipping out of the grass. 43 yards on the kick. Of course, he could have caught it if he could have run under it. But just Sherrod Reigns just simply could not get there in time. The ball goes into the end zone for the touchback. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. The other great Miami quarterbacks, I like closer on that football game. He goes right back to Alfredo Roberts. The pass is complete. A flag is down. I like that call. He came back looking for Roberts, and he passes right to him and puts him right back in the ball game. And we had markers on the play. And here's the call. Offensive pass interference. So Miami continues to self-destruct as they take the ball back to the 10. Charlie, you're right about going right back to Alfredo Roberts. It could be deadly to the psyche of a receiver. You drop a pass, you make a big mistake, and if you don't get the football back again, you may never want it the rest of the football game. And it's a real tribute to Alfredo Roberts to go back and say, hey, Benny, you throw me the football. I got one. The last time I dropped it, I won't drop it again. And they did. Offensive pass interference, 10 yards, and the loss of down back to the 10, so it is second down and 20. And on the draw, here's Heisman. No gain. It's going to be third down and 20. Charlie, the confidence of the Miami offense has got to be shaken at this point. Four interceptions, two fumbles. They've turned the ball over six times. It's almost as if, you know, what's going to happen next? I can guarantee you that Testaverde is short-arming the ball a little bit, making sure that he sees all the defensive players before he throws the football. What do you mean by short-arming? Well, he's not, not really firing it. He's uh, making sure he's a little hesitant, a little tentative. He goes deep, and it is incomplete. Two receivers in the same area. Urban was there, and Alfredo Roberts was also there. As was Marcus Henderson, the defensive back for Penn State. Here's another look. All right, Alfredo Roberts the entire way. That's Shane Collin, number 31, trying to cover him down the middle of the field. It's his own. Michael Irvin and Roberts in the same area, but you know he's going after it all the way. Alfredo Roberts wanting to make up for the drop ball, and the uh, no lack of effort, certainly not at all, by Alfredo Roberts. He goes with the kick, takes the Miami roll, then taken on the second hop by Jim Coach. He'll get a couple of yards on the return, four yards on the return, a 49-yard kick, and J.C. Finney was down very quickly on the coverage team. We haven't seen J.C. as a return man since early in the ballgame. And now Penn State has the ball, 4.56, time remaining. Penn State leads 14 to 10. At their own 43-yard line, first down. No hurricanes inside, but lions are everywhere. Well, that's the Fiesta forecast. Penn State number one, don't celebrate too soon. 4.56, that is the time remaining. And on the reverse is Ray Roundtree. And Roundtree to about the 46-yard line. He ran that reverse eight times during this past season. And Testaverde on the phone with the coaches upstairs. Bob, you think an unusual call? You come down, you have not run a reverse all year. It is not a major part of your offense. There's uh, four minutes and 28 seconds left in the football game. you got to control it. Is that a surprise to you? I think it was Paterno's way of getting a big play into his offense. I, I think that he thought that Miami was not expecting it, and that was a way to maybe surprise him a little bit. He's done that before this season. And, of course, Roundtree made a point to stay in bounds and work some time off of the clock. And here's Dozier. They have a couple of yards to the 48-yard line. And it's going to be third down and five. Jimmy Johnson, the head coach of the game. 
There's and plenty the of time on the quit. clock yeah. uh, for the University of Miami. Uh, they don't have to start using timeouts yet. Interesting situation for Penn State. Do you throw the football? Third down, five yards to go. You got to control the ball. I think you throw it. What do you say, Bob? You go with what got you here, and I think that's the run, Jimmy. Third and five. Yeah, that's why I'm the <laughs> here the quarterback. <laughs> Manoa and Dan Cilio drops him for a loss of two. And we've got a timeout taken by Miami. Miami now with two timeouts left. And watch for number 48, Bubba McDowell of the Canes. He's on the far side, and he has been close to blocking a punt. And here he comes, and he doesn't get there. And Kinchai on the return. And he's down around the 22-yard line. 40 yards on the kick, a 7-yard return. See what he can do from his own 23-yard line. He has pressure. And fights his way out to the 27-yard line. He scrambles for four, and his second down is six. Trey Bauer with the tackle, and the clock continues to move. Charlie, Penn State has played the Heisman Trophy winner three of the last five years and beaten him all three times. So Testaverde, not by himself and not doing so well on New Year's Day, or January 2nd this year, against Penn State. It is second and six. And it's incomplete, almost intercepted by Trey Bauer. In and out of his arm. There's two and a half minutes to go trailing by four as time and he goes deep to Bratton does he get it no he throws it inside and he had to come back for it Marcus Henderson had the coverage do you take a big gamble now with 224 left I don't think so Miami has two timeouts left their defense has been playing fairly well I think you kick it away and try to come back and give it to Vinny Testaverde with a little time left He's got the arm that can get you a touchdown and a national championship in one series. If you, they're going to go with it, though. If you go for it here, Charlie, the whole game is on the line right here. If you one miss play. it, it's over. Here it is for the title. Nine seconds on the 25-second clock. It's there. First down to Brian Blade. Blades down the sideline, all the way to the Penn State 41-yard line. 32 yards, it was fourth and six. Marcus Henderson finally got him. Prior to that play in the second half, Testaverde only seven of 18, 57 yards, three touchdowns, but there he is, just one throw away. Hey, and it tells you something about the Heisman Trophy winner. He wasn't ready to give it up yet. Yeah, they went for it and fourth down, and look at Blades dancing down the sideline. Finally pushed out. A big play by both Blades and Testaverde. Far side, pass is there. And it is Blades again. Duffy Cobbs makes the tackle. Clock moves. There's not a two-minute warning in college ball. It'll just keep on moving. 35-yard line. Second down. Second and three. As time he throws, it is there this time. Brent Perryman. Close to the 25-yard line. And will stop the clock. Eddie Johnson making the stop for the Nittany Lions. They stop the clock for the first down. And the clock will start when the ball is ready for play. It's at the 26. Miami still with two timeouts. Penn State with one. Over the middle. Irvin slips. It goes down at the 22. Has four. Second down and six. The three times in a row, Testaverde went to that quick out to the outside. Penn State seemed content to give it up. They've been doing it all night. Why change now? That time, he goes to Michael Irvin, the playmaker. He's the one you want to go to when it's in the clutch. Testaverde. Irvin at the 10. A gain 
gain of 12. Not taking the timeout. That's for the first down. The clock being stopped in college ball. It shouldn't end any other way, Charlie. That's the way Top it's offensive to team gets a good defensive team playing for the national championship in the last minute. First down. And a big play. Mr. Verde throws. It is complete at the five yard line to Michael Irvin. Henderson wrestles him down at the five. It'll be second down goal to go. The score, 14 to 10. Forget about the field goal. The margin is four. By the way, Brian Blades, five reception, 81 yards. And the key reception of the ball game back and forth at six. Here's Testaverde. Looks right, and he is brought down. Tim Johnson got it. Four sacks for Penn State. And Miami takes the timeout. They have one left. Testaverde wanted to go to the right to that quick out one more time, but the defensive back has the end of the end zone to help him out there. Testaverde could not throw the football, and it's Tim Johnson, number 55, with the sack. Quick timeout on the part of Testaverde. Heads up play with just 25 seconds left. Conlon stays in, 13 yard line. Third down and goal. Incomplete. Incomplete. Fourth down. National Championship. There is a flag down at the 11 yard line. There are nine seconds remaining. And there it is. It's official. The Penn State Nittany Lions are the national champions. John Schaefer's record as a starting quarterback since the seventh grade is now 66 and one. And Joe Paterno has won his 199th game. You could talk about numbers for the next week, but there's only one to count, and that's number one. It's an incredible football game by both teams, though. A storybook season for the University of Miami coming in at 11-0, registering the first undefeated season, the regular year on the part of the University of Miami. And now Penn State will undoubtedly be crowned the national champion. Offensive guard for Penn State, Dan Morgan, at 6'6", 272 pounds. Every time we saw him this week, he said, say something about the offensive line. Say something about the offensive line. They were magnificent. Penn State was magnificent. And I think the Canes were also. It's just the way that it ought to be. It came down to the last minute of play for the national title. And Vinny Testaverde back at fourth and sixth. 
and it could have been over several minutes ago. Well, he showed a great deal of character as well, yeah. Bob, with uh, fourth and six, as you mentioned, throwing the football out to Blades and then getting the first down and giving his team an opportunity to win the football game, and that's what he had to do, Bob. I think you have to give credit to Joe Paterno and his staff. But about our defensive backs being too short, Man, they didn't want to catch the ball. They just came up and rocked them. That's the key to the game. They didn't want to catch the ball. You guys wanted to go out and finish them, but it seems to me you kept them in third and long all the time. How'd you do that? Uh, it's just a great effort by our, our front people. It's just a great effort by the whole team. I mean, we, we knew we could beat them. We had, we had it in our minds that we could beat them all along, and we just took off and did it. All right, here's good. Coach Paterno here. Coach. Great. Congratulations, Coach. I just, I just told Shane... Shane, this is the way you win a national championship out on the field. Well, I always hoped you would that way. I think our kids played a, a great game. They beat a great football team tonight. I, I think our defense played about as great a college football game as I've ever seen. They were so persistent, so persistent. They just destroyed the passing ribbon of mine. Yeah, well, I think our defensive coaches did a super job getting the kids ready. I mean, I came up with the big plays. They've done that now for two years. They're a great bunch of kids. You've won a lot of big games, but this is the biggest one. Well, it's one of the biggest ones, certainly. Uh, we've had a lot of luck in our life, and I have uh, been fortunate to be around a lot of great young people and great coaches, and I just thank the good Lord for everything he's given me. All right, congratulations, yeah. Coach. You guys are number one. Well, I think so. All right, back up to Bob Gustin. Ahmad, thank you very much. As we pointed out at the very beginning of the game, a year ago at the Orange Bowl, it was there for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions against Oklahoma. The Sooners beat them, and they became the national champions. A second chance exactly a year later, and Penn State capitalizes, upsetting Miami, which had been a touchdown. of this defeat fades away for Jimmy Johnson and for Vinny Testaverde. We hope they, too, will have fond memories of the experience of this college football season, a season which ends without a national title for them and with the national championship for Joe Pagano.